AI Mentors is brought to you by Aulis International, covering your business's staffing, consulting and networking needs. Our podcast, AI Mentors, hosted by Mark Kelly, brings you the leading minds in AI, sharing their story, their success and their advice. Focusing on fast tracking you to the top, AI Mentors cuts through the hype to help you kickstart your data science career. Welcome to the AI Mentors Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Kelly, Chief Customer Officer at Aldis International. On today's show, we have Jesus Martinez Blanco, Senior Data Scientist at Flixbus, and Sandro Fan, Senior Recruiter, Data and Tech from Flixbus. Welcome you both to the show today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Welcome you, as well. For those who don't know, Flixbus is a young mobility provider that's been changing the way millions of people travel in Europe and the US. And on today's show, we'll be discussing their background, career advice, and how Flixbus is applying data science to help improve mobility for people around the world. I'll straight into the show. Can I uh, have a little bit of an overview about yourself, Sandro? And also, if you wouldn't mind, tell us a little bit about what Flixbus does and the value that it actually adds in the marketplace. Sure, I will gladly do that. So I've been working now in the field of HR and recruiting for over 10 years in very different industries and organization sizes, so from big corporates to small startups and agencies. And because my heart beats for a lot of digital topics, I finally joined Flixbus around about one and a half years ago, and now I support them getting in touch with the greatest and most passionate tech talent in the industry. So Flixbus is basically Europe's largest green mobility platform for intercity bus and train transportation. And uh, while a lot of people would consider us as uh, disruptors in the industry, I like to remind myself of something one of our founders, uh, Daniel Kraus, mentioned, um, which is that the actual value that we provide is that we are not disrupting, but rather transforming an analog uh, industry with a lot of tradition to provide um, on the one side a great modern and easygoing travel experience for our passengers, and on the other side, economic stability and growth for our bus and train partners in the 21st century. So on this mission, uh, I had the pleasure to work together with data science experts like Jesus on hiring projects. And he also introduced me to the data science retreat in Berlin, where I support the students as a career coach. Sandro, thank you very much for that. Hey, Zoo, same question to yourself. Can you give me a little bit of background about you? And I'm also quite interested on your move from academia to industry, because it's not necessarily a straightforward one. I mean, becoming a, uh, before I, I became a data scientist, I I was working as an experimental physicist in several research institutes and universities, and I did my PhD in Madrid in the area of uh, nanotechnology. Then I moved here to to Berlin, where I live. That was back in 2007, and here in Berlin, I continued working as a scientist for about eight years or so. So at some point around 2015, I had to decide whether to continuing uh, pursuing my career as a scientist or for me that would mean of course to come back to Spain or to remain here in Berlin doing what I really like what I believe really motivates me which is data analysis data modeling something for which this city was offering lots of opportunities back then but also today so in 2015 I decided to join the data science retreat the boot camp that Sandro just mentioned And that's where I get my my first contact with data science professionals. And I had the chance to to build a network that ultimately made my transition to the industry much, much smoother. Indeed, right right after the bootcamp, I got my first job in the industry as a data scientist. And uh, I am actually also now teaching um, a a little workshop, today's workshop on, on this bootcamp, on data visualization. Jesus, tell us, tell us a little bit about some of the projects and work that you're actually working on day to day in Flixbus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, as compared to the problems I was working on while I was in academia, of course, the problems I'm working right now as a data scientist at Flixbus, is, they are very, very different, right? The thing here is that academy, in academia, people tend to pick up a very, very narrow topic and specialize on it. And this is, of course, necessary because there is no way to get original research published unless you become really the world expert on a very specific topic. Honestly, I found that quite limiting. And at some point, I felt that I was not learning anymore. 
On the contrary, in the industry, like in, at Flixus, if you work as a data scientist, there are really many, many fields and uh, industry problems that can be uh, tackled using data science techniques. So you can build a recommender system or classifier for customer segmentation or a system for image recognition or a forecast, you name it, right? So to me, uh, having so many possibilities to learn new stuff and to see them applied and, and have an impact on real life problems, that, that was uh, what made my switch to data science uh, uh, a trip with no return. I have some friend asking me, uh, don't you miss your life as, as a scientist? And of course, the answer is always no, right? Uh, here at Flixus, um, I work with a group of data scientists and engineers in the, in the so-called revenue management automation system. And the idea is that Flixbus has to decide how much to charge for a bus, uh, for a bus ride connecting any two cities in our network. So charging too much would offend, of course, our customers and they will never come back. And charging too less would prevent the company from, the company from, from getting a revenue margin. So, and the problem is that all these pricing decisions have had to be done in a, in a very dynamic way, depending on many variables, like what is the, the general demand for, for the right or which cities are connected. So now if you take into account the, the how large is, uh, is our network with about 5,000 cities and, and counting, then you realize that some kind of automated solution is, is needed because there is no way for the company to, to scale up if these decisions would have to be made by, by humans alone, right? So as you can imagine, our project uh, is mission critical at, at Flixbus and because it, it has a very direct impact on the revenue of the company, obviously. This brings a lot of responsibility, but of course also a lot of motivation. And it's, yeah, the reason is, is, is a very, really uh, challenging problem. So our team is right now focused on the, on the forecasting part of the system. So we take the historical sales from the last years, we build a model of the demand, and then we try to infer from there how much demand is expected to, to come for rights departing in the future. And this estimated demand, this forecast is what later is used to decide what's the most optimum ticket price to charge to, to our customers. Hey Zeus, the, the forecasting can be a tricky, a situation to work on day to day. When you add a sprinkle of COVID to the situation in terms of the context, I'm guessing the whole world is turned upside down in terms of how you do your day job because you're trying to predict demand and work out the, the optimal rates to be charging. But talk us through that journey and how do you work through that? Yeah, indeed, you are right. Uh, obviously, with the with the COVID crisis, lots of things were disrupted. I mean, all over the place, but of course, also at Flixbus. So, as you can imagine, with a, with a, a lockdown in most of the countries where we operate, so the company had to stop serving buses during the first wave, and that is a problem in itself because there is an obvious impact on the on the revenue of the company. But I mean, more from a technical point of view. Uh, for us as data scientists, uh, the issue is that all of a sudden there are now bus lines for which we do not have any, any recent historical data. And so what, 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 is, what is a data scientist without, without data, right? That's uh, the problem. And also the problem is that the little data we have is totally unreliable. So taking into account that the, the demand patterns have changed totally due to the crisis, and it will take really a while until we, we have a stable network again, I believe. Um, that's, that means that it will also take a while until we can do some forecasting in a more reliable way. But nevertheless, we have some mechanisms in place in our production models that make the, the demand prediction somewhat robust against some kind of these kind of, of disruptions, right? So to give you an example, the, the model automatically adapts the level of the predicted demand, depending on the booking development of the specific bus ride for which you are predicting. This is done, of course, automatically by, by the algorithm, and it is, it is in, indeed working as a safety net in, in many situations in which the demand is not as originally expected, as you can imagine, like in here in this COVID crisis. Hey, Sue, so, so many questions to follow up on that. 
But probably the first question that comes is the testing phase. How important is, is to have humans in the loop? Yeah, well, we are actually now uh, working on a human interface to the model. And the idea is that in case the model produces inaccurate predictions, despite the, the automatic safety nets that I just mentioned above, then at least humans should have the, the chance to influence the, the forecast according to some knowledge that the, the model could not pick up just from the data, right? So for example, if, if there is a concert by a famous artist in some city, then the demand for rights going to that city will probably be totally different from anything you see in the historical data for, for a similar period of time. So the, the predictions from, from the model can be corrected or complemented with, with some human knowledge. The key thing here is that although the machine learning solutions are valuable because of the automation and the amount of manual work they can save us, uh, save to humans, still it is it is very important to, to design the whole thing so that humans can eventually intervene, right? Um, it is too risky to, to leave the machine operating alone. And especially this is the case uh, in which, I mean, for, for, for this case in which the, the, the revenue of the company can be very much affected. So not only you need to, of course, monitor the models and, and, the, and, and have some kind of alerting system in case something goes really wrong, that's the typical setup for a machine learning solution, but also you need to, to design the system so that manual intervention is, is allowed. So when you talked about making the move from academia to industry and how it was a very narrow field, sometimes when you're in academia, and you're making real impact. And some of the challenges mm -hmm. when people work in data science is, is working on the wrong problems and not mm -hmm. really making a, an impact within the organization because the problems you're working on don't necessarily move the dial forward. What advice would you share yeah. to add significant value within data science and maybe areas where you've kind of learned from in the past? Yeah, yeah, correct. So, I mean, when data scientists come up with, with solutions to be applied in the, in the industry, there is always an obvious risk of overdoing things, right? That's something that I have seen many times in the past. So trying to find the perfect academic solution in an industry setting is in general counterproductive, according to my experience. So at the same time, of course, data scientists should be very, very much detail oriented because it is too easy to introduce bugs and misconceptions in, in model developments and, and data analysis. So being detail, or, uh, detail oriented is extremely important. Probably the number one skill to, to, to expect from, from a data scientist, but being able to deliver partial solutions to, to iterate on uh, is also very, very important when it comes to, to, to create value. One should try things, develop them with enough detail so that further improvements are allowed. Uh, but also, one should do things allowing for, for an eventual early fail, right? Tell me about the importance of communication. And sometimes we can take this for granted, but why does communication styles matter? Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, that would be, for me, the next important skill to expect from, from a data scientist, in, in my opinion, right? Communication. I would say it is really crucial uh, that your work has a proper outreach. And in fact, we take this thing very, very seriously in, in our team. Of course, it is not easy to explain complex and sophisticated machine learning models and, and solutions to, to managers and stakeholders, but there is no way around it, uh, I would say. It is the only way data scientists can provide enough transparency, which is the first step for building trust on your data products and at the end of the day, uh, as you can imagine, data scientists and also, of course, their data projects will be in a much, in, in a much better place if a decision maker is properly informed about the technical solutions that are proposed, right? Yeah, absolutely, Jesus. If I just switch over to Sandra, I'm really, really interested to hear your advice to technologists within their career. Sure. So, well, I think, I guess there can be a lot of different advices um, um, to give depending on which chapter of your career you're in and what's important for you in your career. 
But um, looking at the current situation the world is in, I recommend to uh, observe latest trends in how technology companies face a pandemic and its economic consequences. For example, you might observe that a lot of companies need to reduce costs right now to make up for a shortage in revenue. So therefore, they focus on data science and machine learning and invest in optimization and automation products. So educating yourself on these topics or shedding a spotlight on your optimization projects in your application will prove as helpful in case you are looking for a new corresponding challenge. Of course, this also applies to Flixbus. We are driving these topics in several areas like marketing, network planning, or like Jesus just mentioned, also in our revenue management domain. But, um, well, if, if you're not looking for a new job right now, uh, I would recommend you to make use of your time to not only invest in your personal education, like most of the people right now are doing, but also invest in your own team. Right now, we are living through some of the toughest times ever and connecting with your internal stakeholders and teammates to learn which challenges they are facing right now will not only benefit you in a way that new exciting project opportunities might come up, but it will also strengthen the bond between you and your colleagues. At Flixbus, we make sure to establish regular touch points with each other, as well as distributing relevant information internally over shared sources and events like our product stories and all hands to retain our efficiency and communication, as well as the team spirit. Sandro, thank you very much for that. That's really, really good advice. And I think we're going through an unprecedented time in history and the opportunity just to focus on yourself and developing new skills and just being always constantly looking and seeking ways to improve, but also looking at how you can improve your team and your colleagues and kind of developing that kind of mindset is so important for now and, and the future uh, too. You've been listening to the AI Mentors podcast. I'm your host, Mark Kelly, Chief Customer Officer at Aldis International. Today's guests have been Jesus Martinez Blanco, Senior Data, data Scientist, and, and Sandro Fan, Senior Recruiter from Flixbus. Thank you very much for your time today, guys. Thank, Thank you, you as well. Us. Get the Aldis Advantage. Become a member of the Aldis community and enjoy some of the following AI meetups. Once a month, our community gathers to listen to some of the leading experts in the world of data science and AI. Our speakers come from all over the world, including Dublin, Boston, and Frankfurt. We also have our AI mentors. Our experts will provide mentoring to all those members. And don't forget our AI in Action podcast. Each week, we have guests from all over the world talking us through their education, career, and more. Become an Aldis member and get the Aldis advantage. For more information and to sign up for our newsletter, log on to www.aldis.com. That's www.aldis.com. Aldis International, empowering through AI.